In today's video, we're gonna be checking out the UVI workstation. We're gonna be taking a look at the routing options. We'll be looking at the mixer window. We'll be taking a look at the auxiliary effects and the master bus effects. We'll be taking a look at the ARP module and we'll put together a simple production using some of the flavors available to us from UVI's Vintage Vault. So let's just add ourselves some outputs here within the UVI workstation. So we're gonna go over to settings and we're gonna create a few more outputs by clicking this plus button here. At the moment, everything is going through the main output. Let's set it so they're going through different outputs. We're gonna click and just Now we have everything going through different outputs and that is gonna correspond with our mixing desk. Quick word about MIDI control. Here we are in the multi menu again, and you can see we've got A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way down to 10. That represents the MIDI channel that controls that particular instrument. You're able to mute or solo each of the individual channels, just as you would on a mixing desk. You can also control volume, which you're able to do with the mouse, or you can double click and use the keypad. You're panning, and then you have aux sends one and two. In addition to that, we then have controls that specifically relate to being able to adjust the tuning of the instruments themselves. So you can adjust by octave, semitone, or by fine tuning the tones. If we move to the main window, this is where you're gonna load up your instruments. So over here, we can select which part we're working on. Right, we need to find ourselves a bass noise. So let's double click. We're gonna go with Vector Pro 22. We're gonna go to bass, and we're gonna take a little 80s bass here. I'm liking that texture, but I think it's gonna work better for us if we go for a bit of ARP on it. So let's enable the ARP. Oh yeah. Let's see what we can do. We've got some presets up here we can play with. Let's go with a basic uh, up down. Yeah, that ain't gonna do your brain in. Let's try dance floor. I do like that it's got a nice pulse to it. So let's grab the pattern dance floor one and let's see if we can do a couple of things to make it a little bit more interesting. Well, the first things we can do is we could add an extra note here just by clicking at the bottom. I don't really like that, but I like the idea of maybe having a bit of a holdover so this note is a little longer. So we press shift as we click, get a little red. We get a little bit of emphasis, kind of ducks it in, which I like. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And I'm gonna pull this up, I think, so it matches pretty much the volume of the other things. There's a couple of things we can do to add a variation of notes. We can either do it here and say add, say we can go to a fifth here. Maybe we go to like a seventh or something here. Yeah, that's fine. The other way we could do it is we could do it here with the up and down. So we'll set the octave to say one octave range. And whilst we're at it, we can also have a bit of a play with the step length. So let me back it right out. But again, I'm not really loving that. So I think we'll just keep it nice and simple. Just playing that one octave. So there's a couple of different ways that we can affect tempo and groove. Um, you can see up here that we've got the tempo set to 106. Now that's synced to the DAW. So we have to adjust it in DAW. So let's try something ridiculously fast. Oh yeah, let's try something very slow. Quite like when it's sat somewhere around here. So that's tempo. Let's have a little bit of groove here. We can play with groove a little bit. So we're gonna automate the cut here on the filter. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna right click and we're gonna come down here to host automation 
and we're going to select a host automation and there we go now cubase uh, the daw and the uvi workstation are talking to each other and now i can write in the automation so this is without the automation this is with the automation Just adding that little bit of extra texture and variation to it. Let's start with the delay. So we can come over to the effects options and here we are in the standard UVI effects setup. And the first thing that I wanna do here is work on spread. And that's much tidier with being a baseline. We want to kind of tuck to the middle. I don't want to fling it about all over the place. Let's have a little go at the feedback. Again, I like that tidying. I'm happy with the 1.8. Let's just blend the mix back. This is the bass without the delay. This is the bass with the delay. See how we're just adding that little bit of extra rhythm to it. Find some drums. So we're gonna to go to part two here and we're gonna use this emulation. Right, let's move over to the effects section for the drums. We'll go for a little bit of reverb. And we've got a gated verb. So we'll put a full mix and then we'll blend it back in. So this is the drums without the gated verb. And this is the drums with the gated verb. So let's have a record and see if we can get ourselves a simple chord pattern going with this. So let's start by just setting the basic level of the stab. Queued up a couple of brass instruments that I found and I've just tuned in one or two things. So let's have a go at adding an auxiliary effect. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna send to the auxiliary. Okay, it's time to balance in the mix and the amount that we're sending. Now, typically you'd keep the mix at 100% on auxiliary, but I actually like the idea of getting kind of double tracking effect from this. So what I'm gonna do is actually kind of cheat it a little bit and kind of use this as a sort of double track effect. I'm gonna bring the mix in so we get some reverb and an awful lot of double track. That I like. I like the fact we've got that kind of double track thing going on, 28% on the reverb. It's not really the way you're supposed to use an auxiliary, but hey, it's working for us, so we're doing it. Right, let's go to auxiliary two, and I wanna try adding a little bit of reverb for the drum. And let's add in a reverb. Uh, we have some pre-delay reverbs here. We've got percussion room. That sort of makes sense for drums, so let's try it. Okay. Let's blend in the amount of drums that we're sending to the reverb. So we're gonna keep it on 100% the way you would typically do with an auxiliary. I'll start the drum verb off at, at minus affinity, and then we'll slowly blend in the send. All right, let's just quickly go to the master bus section and we're gonna add a little bit of master bus compression. Now, technically you should really do this at the beginning of a mix, so you're mixing through it. But 
we're in a kind of rule breaking kind of a mood today. So we're just going to throw a little bit on at the end just to see what the UVI uh, workstation can do for us. So I'm just going to play this through and kind of dial it in real quick. All right, let's do a quick before and after. So this is without the compression. Let's drop that compression in. And you can hear it's just stiffening up the track just a little bit. So we started off with the bass. Then we dropped in some drums. The first app. And then our brass. Followed up by adding in some reverb for the brass. She did a double track. And we chuck some reverb on the drums. And then we push some master bus compression right at the end. Just to stiffen it up. The workstation interface gives you an awful lot of control at a lot of different levels. I like the individual channel routing. The mixer window options are extremely useful. The, the, being able to control level like this and mute and solo is very, very useful. I also really like these auxiliary sends. They give you just that little bit of extra control. The master bus option is particularly useful. The idea that you can just add that little bit of glue. The ARP module is extremely good. I really like this groove amount. Very easy to dial in, just a little bit of syncopation on it. I really like the way that you can click through the different layer effects. So you can see the different effects for each of your instruments very, very quickly. The automation options are extremely good. You just have to get used to this idea that you need to actually cue the automation up. The bass automation in particular was extremely effective. There's an awful lot of depth in this workstation. You've got a great set of mixing options. It feels very simple to use. It gives you the controls you need and no more than that. Having it all in one place is a huge advantage. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. That's the UVI workstation. Good night and good noise. Stay safe and stay healthy.